Hello there, Wind Energy students. Dr. John Schrage here, and I'm giving you the first lecture of Module 4 about static stability. Now, if you actually looked at the page numbers in your book and so on, you saw that this is not the beginning of Chapter 4. Your author in your textbook does something strange and tries to put off the discussion of static stability until he's talked about pretty much everything else, and then says, oh, by the way, what was causing those changes was stability. Here's a better idea. Let's just get this idea of static stability out of the way right from the start. That way we can always be using this as a part of our understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about the wind profile. Okay, so static stability is going to be a type of stability, but let's talk about this word stability in general. Stability is an important idea in science, in engineering, whatever. Um, this idea of something being stable or something being unstable, I mean, if we pull up a full dictionary definition of stability, it's the quality of being stable. It's a property that a, a body ha has that causes when it's disturbed from a condition or equilibrium to develop forces that restore the original configuration. Um, let me give you some examples of that. I think it's better to think about stability as the tendency of a system to resist change instead of, uh, and instead return back to its original state. Let me show you some examples of stability. Ugh. I happen to have a few little items right here. Here I brought in just an ordinary like cooking ladle kind of thing, spatula, and I just brought in like a bamboo skewer that I'm going to put on the, uh, the, through the hole on this, on this thing here. And what I want you to notice is how this thing is hanging here. Um, it is in a configuration here, it is in an equilibrium, it isn't changing how it's hanging, and if I bump this, if I nudge it, to use the terminology we use in so when we're talking about stability, if I just give it a little nudge, Forces develop that return the spatula back to its original position. The spatula, you know, gravity will start pulling the spatula back to its original position, and after a few oscillations and so on, it returns back to its original configuration. It's a very stable system when it's hanging here like this. Even fairly large nudges result in it still developing forces that result in it returning back to its original configuration. I mean, I could make other configurations. I mean, I can't quite get this thing to balance on the end of the stick this way. But probably with enough patience and enough balance, I could get it to do it. But this would be a very unstable configuration of the spatula. Because even a tiny nudge would send it to a radically different state, namely the opposite state in this case. Let me show you another example. Here's some little magnets I swiped from my kids. Okay, two little toy magnets here. Okay. Now, there's a number of different ways we could put these together that would be more stable or less stable. For example, um, I wish I had like a glass tube I could put these in so that they could, you know, balance on each other a little bit better. So I've got two opposite uh, poles of the magnet here. They're pushing each other apart. And like I said, if I had a glass tube or something like that to put them in, it might be easier to tell. But, you know, if I put them in a glass tube against there like this, this green magnet here would eventually be very stable. If I pulled the little magnet a little farther away, gravity would just pull it back closer to the blue magnet. On the other hand, if I push the blue, uh, the green magnet a little bit closer to the blue one, well, the force of the magnetism mag up of the uh, the magnetic poles will force them to be farther apart. And so, you know, like if this were in a little glass tube, the green one would just be hovering right above the blue one. On the other hand, let's swap them and use you know the north and the south poles this way. We had a very stable configuration before. Even relatively big changes were just resulting in the magnet going back the way it was. Now let's do it when we match them up this way. Now, if I were sufficiently skilled at this, it seems like there should be some place along the way where we could get this blue one to just be hanging here in the air. Because there would be a force of the, the other magnet pulling it up, exactly balancing the force of gravity pulling it down. But in practice, that would be virtually impossible to find and would be incredibly unstable. Because if this little magnet got even, if the blue magnet got even a little too close to the green one, it would accelerate upward and, and just grab on, it would move to a new state. Instead of hanging in the air, it would be hanging up here. Or if I got the blue magnet just a little too far away from the green one, the magnetic the attraction would no longer be enough and another force would take over gravity and it would just pull the magnet away and it would accelerate to a new state, namely on the floor. This way would be extremely unstable. The situation would be trying very hard to make a big change to the system. Stability then is, can be thought of as this tendency of the system to resist a big change and instead just return to its original state. Now, like I said, there's lots of different kinds of stability. You know, this was just the stability of this 
thing I was putting together with these magnets and so on. But um, in the atmosphere, there's lots of types of stability too, and they're going to be, the stability of the atmosphere at any given time is going to be determined by stuff like wind shear or like as in how winds are changing with respect to height or the temperature profile and how the temperatures change with respect to height and so on, which means that stability is going to be something that varies. It's going to be something that varies from location to location, from layer to layer in the atmosphere, and from time to time. This is why we have to get measurements of the atmosphere using things like weather balloons and radiosons or instrumented meteorological masts. We have to be able to quantify the stability of the atmosphere, its ability to resist change versus its ability to uh, its desire to accelerate a change. So there are many different kinds of stability in the Earth's atmosphere, different ways in which the atmosphere can either work to encourage a big change or to resist a big change. Um, only one of those, static stability, the title of this lecture, is going to be important for what we're doing right now, but there are others. Just to give you a sense, there's a type of stability called baroclinic instability that's about whether troughs and ridges in the jet stream grow and become bigger and, and deeper, or whether they damp out and be, the flow becomes more zonal again. There is going to be a type of stability called dynamic instability that's all about whether there's enough wind shear in the atmosphere to overcome uh, any resistance to like rolling motions. The atmosphere doesn't love to make rolling motions, and so if you have enough wind shear, the atmosphere can be forced to, to do that. You can get these kind of, those are called Kelvin Helmholtz waves, which you're seeing there in that picture there. Okay, that's dynamic instability. The atmosphere resists that unless conditions are different. But the kind of stability that we're worried about in this module of the course is static stability. And I know that's not a term that you're familiar with, but static stability is a property of a layer of an at the atmosphere at any given time. You could say, hey, I'm thinking about from one kilometer to two kilometers up, or I'm thinking from the surface to 100, kilo 100 meters up, or something like that. You would define a layer of the atmosphere. Static stability is a property of that layer. And it describes what's going to happen if you take an air parcel in that layer and you move it vertically from its original position. If you force it to move like you are lifting air over a hill or um, a cold front or a warm front is forcing the air parcel to rise, then what's going to happen? Oh, that's the core of what static stability is going to mean. Now we're going to have to figure out how we're going to determine it and what it means and so on. But let's answer a few questions first. Question one. Hey, my kid built a tower out of blocks and the tower was very stable. What does the word stable mean in this context? A, even if, if the tower was slightly nudged, it tended not to fall down. B, it was impossible to knock the tower down. C, even a small nudge on the tower was enough to knock the tower down. Or D, it took a long time for my kid to build the tower. Which of those four is what we mean when we say that that tower was stable? Make a choice from those four options and get a little feedback before you move on to question two. 